before I get started with the video, I want to clarify something real quick. You might be looking at the title and thinking, how could actor protection systems be an issue in game? They barely even do anything. You would be right, and that is partially what I want to talk about, but we'll get back to that later. The original title for this video was, Are Active Protection Systems a Good Idea? Referring of course to War Thunder and not real life. Obviously they're a good idea in reality. The issue is that I've been using questions for titles a lot recently, and I wanted to take a break from that. So don't read into the title too much. Think of it as an issue War Thunder could have in the future, not one it has right now. With that out of the way, let's dive into it. As War Thunder progresses, newer and newer vehicles will be added over time. Though APSs have existed on tanks for a while, they're becoming much more complex with modern MBTs. The idea of the APS goes all the way back to the 60s, with the American Dash Dot concept, but it wasn't exactly practical. In the late 70s, the Soviets created the real first APS, Drozd. There's a lot of ways Gaijin could expand on APSs in-game, but they do present some issues. First, let's take a look at the two types of APS. The first and most familiar is Soft Kill. A few tanks already have this, namely the T-90A, AMX-30B2 Brinus, and the M1A1 Heavy Common, which all use electro-optical jammers. Soft Kill, as the name implies, doesn't actively destroy the incoming warhead. Instead, it disrupts the link between the gunner and missile, making the missile veer away from the target. There is one slight issue, though. They typically only work on older Sakhalos missiles. Stuff like Totus and Chrysanthemas can't be jammed. I don't know how it works on the Chrysanthema, but for Totus it works as follows. In addition to the infrared beacon, the missile also has a xenon beacon. If the thermal beacon is disrupted, the xenon beacon can take over. For tanks that do have soft kill and war thunder, you will practically never face a missile you can actually jam. There are two main exceptions to this. One, someone brings a lower tier AT jam carrier as a backup, and two, a SAM carrier is trying to overpressure you. Now despite my negative connotation, I don't think this is a bad thing. Tanks with soft kill shouldn't be invulnerable to missiles. That just wouldn't be fun. I do think it would be nice if they were a bit more effective, but Gaijin isn't and shouldn't be shuffling BRs based on that. It's not a conscious decision on their part, it's just where APS tanks tend to land. Now let's talk about the second type, hard kill. For hard kill systems, they physically destroy or destabilize the projectile, and they work on pretty much everything. When it detects an incoming round at a certain velocity, it deploys a frag warhead at the target. In game, there aren't any tanks that have hard kill modeled, but in the most recent April Fools event, they did experiment with the concept. How it was modeled wasn't the greatest. I didn't read the dev blog for it, so I wasn't aware hard kill was a thing. When firing a missile at a tank, it would get near and then suddenly detonate itself. I thought I was hitting the missile's max range, or possibly getting server issues. I didn't know it was hard kill until I played an MBT myself. If you did play the missile carrying tank, you essentially had to deplete the APS's charges on one side of the vehicle, until you eventually got through and killed them. This was doable, since that vehicle had like 60 missiles or something, but I don't see this working in the actual game. The missiles in the event were non-line of sight, meaning you could fire them from cover. There are no vehicles like that currently. Even with top attack, you still have to expose the launcher in sight. You can't just sit there and spam missiles at one target, hoping they're too dumb to notice. And for most vehicles in War Thunder, I don't think they have enough missiles anyway. If hard kill APSs became common, they would make top tier an even greater MBT slugfest. Auxiliary vehicles already don't perform well in that BR range, not to mention that stock heat would be useless. If they were to model hard kill, they would need to do a few things. First, introduce systems with a low number of charges, or limit them artificially. For example, the Challenger 2 Black Knight only has two charges per side, so it should be fairly balanced. Second, make it so they're not always effective in destroying the round. Sometimes these systems just don't work, or only succeed in lowering the round's effectiveness. Third, make sure the effect is clear, so players actually understand what is happening. It should look like this, not just the missile self-destructing. Fourth, make it so you have to research hard kill systems. Soft kill comes with vehicle stock and that's fine, they barely do anything anyway. Hard kill will be much more effective, and therefore should be harder to obtain. That's pretty much all I had to say on it, but I would like to hear what you guys have to say. I'm sure you guys can find better ways to balance it than I can. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.